Okay. Example 24 is, again, going to be determining whether these arguments are valid or not. Um, you're not being told what method to use, okay? So that can be a truth table. It could be um, using one of the laws of valid arguments. You could also show an argument is invalid if you can use one of the fallacies, okay? But it's always perfectly acceptable to use a truth table. What I would love to encourage you to do, all right, is to do as many of these as you can without watching the video. However, I do want to give you one little tip before you get started, okay? Um, the tip comes with this very first phrase here, and you'll see things like this quite often. Um, all people are mortal, okay? And you'll start to see things like that. You need to be able to, in logic, take things that people say all the time, okay? All people are mortal. That's like a perfectly normal sentence, but you have to be able to translate that into an if-then, an or, an and, um, or, a, or a negation, okay? We have to translate it into something where we're using or an if and only if, um, one of those symbols, okay? So all people are mortal. Another way to say that would be if if you are a person, then you're mortal, okay? Abbreviating that and not using very good English, okay? Without writing all the words. But all people are mortal means if you're a person, then you're mortal, okay? That will help you set up an argument. So for this one, um, I'm going to choose to see if this is one of our valid forms of arguments or maybe a fallacy, okay? So if I am, or if you are a person, then you are mortal. I am a person, so P is true. Therefore, I am mortal, Q, okay? Um, this is a valid argument. This happens to be the law of detachment, which we just went over in the very last example. So I'm gonna let you or encourage you strongly to go ahead and set up these other arguments, okay? The first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go through and set them up symbolically. I'm gonna see if they happen to match any of our laws or fallacies so that I can hopefully pretty quickly get through those. I'll put the video back at that point um, so that you can see it, okay, just to that point. And then um, I'll kind of walk you through the next step. So maybe the first thing, just see if you can set these up symbolically. All right, so um, first thing I want you to check is if you were able to set these up symbolically um, and if you were able to do so correctly. All right, so again, you can pause. You can move this video around as much as you want. Um, I will make a note on part B. There is no form of an argument that has two if-thens as part of the premises. And so because that's the case, um, one thing that I'm going to note is this one is going to have to be done by table, okay, by a logic table. There's no other way to do that. And again, that's because of those two things. There is no form, um, a common form, that has two if-thens as the premises, okay? So we're going to have to make a table for that one, um, but maybe not the case for the rest. All right, for part C, oops, sorry there. Um, for part C, um, you can see the form that we've got set up, all right? D, you can check your form as well, and E, you can check your form. And again, on E, I wrote down what P and Q and R represented just so I kind of kept track, okay? There were a lot of things going on there. Um, with part C and part D, I will tell you that you hopefully will recognize those as some of our laws or fallacies, okay? Um, you do, on part D, have to, again, make some switches on all men are created equal. That means if you're a man, then you're created equal, okay? All people who are created equal are women. So if you're created equal, then you are a woman. Um, therefore, all men are women. So therefore, if you're a man, then you're a woman. All right. Now, as crazy as that sounds, um, from a logical standpoint, this is 100% a valid argument. This is the law of transitivity. 
Okay, so all you women's lib people, there you go. You can use that all day long, all right? Um, part C, that one might look somewhat familiar as well, okay? Um, that one is the law of contraposition, also a fully valid argument. And it looks exactly that way in the law. There's nothing like we didn't switch any knots or anything around. Um, e is one, I'll tell you, it can be a little, um, a little bit tricky, okay? This one definitely can be a little bit tricky. Um, but we, um, again, have a lot of things happening there that's not going to work very well. Um, so that's going to also require a table of some sort. Again, we don't have the, um, I don't know why that just switched to yellow. Um, we don't have anything that goes through three different arguments. So knowing now that we need a truth table, I'm going to encourage you to pause if you have not already made truth tables for part B and part E. Go ahead and make the truth tables and decide whether or not these arguments are valid. Okay, so here is the truth table. It's kind of a big monster. Um, I have sort of highlighted um, each section and then used that color to head the column um, so you can kind of see how things are related. I do want to point out with the three premises, um, which is this column right here that I'm going to highlight here in just a second for you. Turn on something yellow. Um, this one right here, okay? When you've got those three premises and it's a giant and, all three of the, the individual um, statements have to be true for the whole thing to be true, right? Just like with, you know, if P and Q is true, um, both P and Q have to be true individually. The same thing is true here. So as you're looking at those three different sections, which would be this one and this one and this one, if there's any false out of those three previous columns, then the big and statement is completely false, okay? Um, then when it comes down to the last column, again, we're taking those three premises and seeing if they imply the conclusion. And one of the things that you'll notice is that right among there, we have a false. And if this is a valid argument, um, we should end up with a total group of trues there at the end. And so what that tells us is after all of this work, this is an invalid argument. Okay, um, next we will move on to E at the bottom of the page, which also requires a truth table. Okay, so here is E, and again, in a very similar fashion to how I did the last one, um, each highlighted portion there is in the corresponding color. Um, and you will see, actually, um, exactly like the last one, um, there is one false, and it happens to be in the exact same spot. And so, again, because we have one false um, as we evaluated the entire argument, that makes this, um, sorry, not valid, it makes us invalid, um, and so that is not going to work either. Um, all that work, um, just to find out, it is invalid. All right, um, I think you'll see, again, kind of the point here is when you can um, determine that you can use a law of validity or a a fallacy um, for an argument not being valid definitely saves time, okay? Yes, you do have to have those arguments like kind of known. Um, I would recommend just an index card or a sticky note or something, have it next to you so that you can um, set up the argument symbolically and then pretty quickly look at something right there um, to see if you can determine whether or not you're valid or invalid without having to use a truth table every time.